Now, he first shot to fame in the iconic boy band Boyzone before embarking on a successful solo career. Away from the stage, Ronan is a radio DJ, father of five and loose man. But his latest mission is to get more men talking about grief, a cause very close to his heart. So please welcome uh, Ronan Keating. Hi, Ronan. Hi, Hi. Hey, how are you, ladies? How's it oh, going? Yeah, we're all doing well. Yeah. We're doing well. So, Ronan, you're an ambassador for a charity called Strong Men. And yeah. the current campaign is hashtag bear yourself. Can you tell us a little bit yeah. more about that? Well, basically, it's um, it's trying to encourage men to to be more open and speak about, uh, well, grief, ma mainly strong men deals with men dealing with grief. And the, the most important part is to be able to talk to each other. Uh, the statistics are pretty crazy. One in three men find it difficult to show their emotions. I mean, in the, in the UK, which is pretty crazy when you, when you think about it in this day and age. So, you know, and the, the things that you're talking about on the show today, it really relates to it because times have changed so much. Uh, you know, me, more men are house husbands, more women are out, you know, earning, earning the dough and bringing it home. Re, you know, a lot of stuff has reversed and, and we really need to, to get with the times and, and, and get with the program, us men, and, and kind of be able to speak to each other and be more, be open with each other. And it all leans on mental health. And which is something we all speak about a lot, as you know, I've spoken about on the show many times. Rona, uh, do you think there was a time in your life that made you think more about your mental health? Or do you think just as you've got older and the kids have got older that you've looked into it more? Or do you think there was a pinnacle moment that made you think, I'm not looking after myself <sighs> mentally here? Yeah. I think there's lots of different times. I think in your 20s, you think you know it all. Um, as we all know, you think you know everything, you don't know anything. And, and in your 30s, you still think you know it all and you don't. And, and I've gone through different times, tough times in my life, losing my mother at 21 years of age, um, losing my best friend, he was 33, Stephen Gately. And, you know, though, it's times like that, really, that you evaluate and you, you question things and, and you ask yourself, you know, am I living the right way? Am I getting the most from me? Uh, you know, and am I the best version of myself? And and all of these different questions. So it, it's along the way that you 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 find different different challenges and and different times that you have to say to yourself, you know, am I doing okay? Am I all right up here? You know, the the, the mind is a dark place. It's a scary place. And and you know, uh, we really need to be able to talk more about it and be open about it. I talk to somebody. I have my doctor that I go and talk to. Um, uh, Dr. Dan, I spoke about him before on, on Loose Lads and um, Loose Men, sorry. And um, yeah, I think it's really, really important that we're more comfortable with that, you know, uh, with talking about that. But that's what's really important, being comfortable with it, being able to talk to each other. Mm -hmm. Where do you think that is? Because it's hard, isn't it? I mean, if you do lose someone, because this campaign is specifically about around grief, isn't it? And I think it's, yeah. it's, like you say, things are changing so much, but how does the person that hasn't been brought up to open up, up, to open up mm. about their emotions make those changes? And we always say, yeah. don't we, on here, that it's so, it feels so different for us as women that we can talk and we can share. And, and, and it's often, often men don't have those kind of friendships, do they, and the, that space to yeah, talk? Yeah, because we all come from, well, we come from a generation that believes it's unmanly to share our yeah. emotions. And that's what's ridiculous. And, you know, some, a charity like Strong Men, which, you know, they have different ways of doing it. They have weekends where the, the lads go away and they, they spend time hiking together up mountains and so on and spending time breaking it down, speaking with each other, speaking with like-minded people that have been through the same sort of thing. And, and you know, also the campaign that we're rolling out now on, on Instagram, if you go on to uh, strongmen.org.uk, you'll see some of the lads who have fared themselves in, in, in a tasteful way um, to try and kind of, shake off the stigmas and so on and uh, deal with these matters. Uh, you know, Ronan, what you said about loss and grief, you know, something I'm going through with myself and, you know, after losing my dad, a real conversation um, was needed about, you know, just yeah. that pain and heartache. And I had that conversation a lot with my son and it took something like that to really mm. bridge that, um, open that dialogue with us. What, what or how did you start this conversation with your own children? Well, my eldest boy is 22 years of age. I mean, he, you know, he's, he's a man. I was in boy zone for six years at this stage. You know, it's crazy, you know, to see I have a boy and my daughter's 20. But I think, you know, I've, I've never been afraid to tell my kids I love them and to, to tell them that I've made mistakes or that I'm weak or any of those things. So I think it's, you know, from an early age, I've, I've 
had a great relationship with my kids, all of them. I, you know, I have five children now and my youngest Coco is, is one year of age and, and it won't be any different there. Cooper, who's four, I, I mean, every night I tell him I love him and we talk all the time. And I think that in school, the way he communicates and the, te- the way that the new platforms that they teach children these days with colors and so on and showing their emotions through colors in the classroom, it's fantastic, it's brilliant, it's important. And it, starting the conversation at whatever age is, is really, really important. And th- this is something strong men do. And I'm very passionate, about, you know, uh, ambassador about what the lads are doing. F and Dan, what they do, the lads are amazing and, and I salute them and I'm honoured to be an ambassador. Ronan, it's really interesting, isn't it, that you've got children at, at two very different stages. You know, your older kids are 20, 22, and then you've got the young ones. Are you a different dad? Um, I think you change all the time. I think, you you know, sometimes you're you're a certain dad, sometimes you're a different type of dad. I mean, it's... It's, it changes. Um, I think you learn, you're learning as you go along. I'm 44 years of age. I'm learning all the time about being a dad. And, I'm, and I listen to people. I take advice. I listen to my wife. She listens to me. We, you know, we, we communicate about it. I, I try to be a good dad. I'm spending more time now than ever I am than I ever before at home. And um, so talking about your, you know, the paternity leave that you're talking about later in the show. I, Coco was born uh, four days into lockdown last year. I got to spend eight, ten months at home. Uh, and to, to just to change every nappy and to be part of every bath and bedtime. And it was amazing. It's a wonderful experience. And, and uh, I've loved every minute of it. Oh, oh, got goosebumps. Well, Ronan, listen, <laughs> thanks so much for speaking Thank to us uh, oh. today. Um, Thank strong you. Men. Thanks for allowing us. And hashtag bear yourself. Yeah. And if you've been affected by anything that Ronan has been talking about, there are helplines on our website.